Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Uh, we've talked about ties, we've talked about dots, and today we're going to be talking about ties and dots. Very exciting. Uh, with those two things combined, you uh, form some pretty awesome stuff, rhythm-wise. Can't wait to tell you all about it. Uh, so here we go, let's go on to the next slide. So the whole purpose of this lesson today is just to just to kind of talk about a very common rhythms that both in, that involve both uh, dots and ties. Uh, this first example, um, since you are all keen observers, uh, you will see that there is no tie here. There's just a dotted note. So what am I talking about? Uh, well, we're, we're going to get to that in a second. Um, as the as the rhythm stands right now, uh, it, it's it's one and three four. But if I were to do that with a metronome, two, ready. Go one and three four ta 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 ta. That's what it would sound like without any ties. But what if we just wanted to put a tie right here, right? That would mean that this three we would no longer say since this chord note is tied to this eighth note now. So that three goes away. See you later. Uh, now this rhythm is going to sound like this. Two ready go one and four, one, and four, one, and four, ta, ta, ta. That rhythm you will see everywhere in music. In fact, let me just show you something real quick right now. Um, I want to change this measure from a 4-4 four, four measure to a 5-4 measure. So now we can fit five beats in each measure, right? So that means that uh, we can add an extra quarter note at the end. So uh, yeah, we got a dotted chord note, an eighth note, tied to a chord note, and then after all that, two more chord notes, right? So listen to what this rhythm sounds like now, and see if you can kind of maybe figure out what famous spy song this rhythm comes from. Two, ready, go. One, and four, five. One, and four, five. One, and four, five. Do you recognize it? It's actually the uh, the rhythm to Mission Impossible, the main theme for that for that movie and that show. Uh, listen in. Two, ready, go. Ba 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 ba. One and four five. One and four five. Maybe you hear it now. Um, that's all. That's all hap That all happens before the do 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 part. But yeah, that's Mission Impossible. So just to show you that how common this kind of figure is, the one and four is, is just, you see it everywhere, including in Mission Impossible. This next slide is kind of showing you the same thing. Uh, this measure here was the measure we were just talking about. But then I added this measure on top of it. Uh, it has a dotted note, a dotted quarter note, but it doesn't have any ties. That Again, that's going to change later. Um, if I were to count that second measure, I would go... One, and, and then you come back in on beat three, and then you rest on four. Okay, and then as is, this these two measures will sound like this. Two, ready, go. One, and, four, one, and, three, rest. Ta, 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 rest. Okay, so now I'm going to change it up, though. Um, what if I wanted to get crazy and take this quarter note and tie it to this eighth note even though it's it's in another measure. You can still do that. You can tie that way. So I'm going to tie that quarter note to that eighth note, which means that you no longer say one in the down in the in the second measure since that eighth note that downbeat is tied to beat four of the other measure. So now this sounds like this. Two, ready, go. One and four and Three, rest. Ta, 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 rest. So a good way to think about this particular type of rhythm, which you will also see quite a bit, is I want you to, I want to point out something. We start with a dotted quarter note, okay? And that dotted quarter note is worth a quarter note plus an eighth note. And, or if you want to think of it this way, since we're in 4-4 four, four time signature with a quarter note getting a beat, a dotted quarter note is worth one and a half beats. All right. The next thing we have is an eighth note tied to a quarter note. Well, that's just adding an eighth note plus a chord note. So this has the same rhythmic 
a value as this. This is worth one and a half beats. This is worth one and a half beats. It's just kind of spelled out differently, right? So one and a half beat, one and a half beat, and guess what? Another quarter note attached to another eighth note. This is another one and a half beats. After that, we have a dotted quarter note, another one and a half beats. So it's as if you're just kind of playing one after another, one and a half beat, one and a half beat, one and a half beat, one and a half beat. And then lastly, you end on a regular chord note on three. This is why that this is why you're alternating a downbeat with an offbeat. Downbeat, offbeat, downbeat. You're alternating because it's every time you play the note, it's it's worth one and a half beats. So it just kind of ends up falling in place like that as the beats go on. Uh, listen one more time. Two, ready, go. One and four and three. Ta, 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 ta. So we're alternating on the beat and off the beat with this kind of figure. All right, so now we're moving on to a different pattern, uh, the last pattern I want to talk about today. Um, and this one is using uh, dotted eighth notes as opposed to dotted quarter notes like we were using in the last pattern. So the, the rhythms are getting a bit quicker. Uh, we're, we're kind of thinking 16th notes and dotted eighth notes now. In fact, you'll see that you'll, you'll, you'll see some of the same familiar <coughs> rhythmic patterns that we were talking about in the last lesson, I believe. Um, so yeah, here we go. So how would I count this as it stands right now? Well, I would say one, ah, uh, beat two is two and, beat three is three E, because you're starting with a 16th note, and then you end on a normal quarter note for beat four. That's all that four gets, that quarter note. Okay, so what does this sound like? Two, ready, go. One, a two, and three, e, four. Ta, 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 ta. Here's where things get a little tricky, because what we're going to do is we're going to put a tie from this 16th note to that 8th note. So that means that we no longer say uh, the 2, because that one eighth note is now connected to the 16th note. Uh, and this is going to sound like this. Two, ready, Go. One, uh, and three, e, four. Ta, 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 ta. Okay, things are going to get even crazier, and I'm going to put a tie from this eighth note to that sixteenth note. That means we no longer say the three on that one sixteenth note. The three goes away. And now, this is going to sound like this. Again, the dots are just going to show you where the beats are. It's not going to show you what the actual rhythm is, okay? Two, ready, go. One, a, uh, and, e, four. One, a, uh, and, e, four. One, a, uh, and, e, four. Ta, 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 ta. Again, just like the other pattern earlier, I can't tell you how many times this, this rhythm is used in music. Um, even if I'm listening to the radio and I have the pop station on, this, this rhythm is, is all over the place with that kind of music. It's everywhere. I'd like to break this down to maybe help you understand it a little bit better. Um, I, I want you to think of a dotted eighth note, the thing that we start with right here. That dotted eighth note is worth three sixteenth notes. Okay? And then if we break down this tied combination, how many sixteenth notes are in an eighth note? There's two. So two plus one, there's a one sixteenth note there, that's three. So this is worth three sixteenth notes. This is worth three sixteenth notes. This is worth three sixteenth notes. And then lastly, this is also worth three sixteenth notes. It's another dotted eighth note. And then we lastly, we, we end on beat four, which is a regular quarter note. So we got all these notes that are worth three sixteenth notes each, one after the other. I'd like to show you how that kind of fits within the beats a little bit better. So what I'm showing you here are all of the possible 16th notes in each beat. Beats 1, beats 2, beats 3, and then I actually just kept beat 4 as a quarter note. And then if I continued filling in the countings for those 16th notes, that would look like this. And we've seen these before, that would be 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4. Okay, so like we were saying before, all of these notes up here, there were 3 16th notes each, right? Okay, so if we mapped that out amongst all of the possible 16th notes, that'll show us that 
this starts on 1. 3 16th notes later, we have a. Uh. 3 16th notes later, we have and. 3 16th notes later, we have e. And then 3 16th notes later, we have beat 4. And that's where we get the counting, the 1, a, uh, and, e, 4 because there's three sixteenth notes in between each of those each of those moments. Okay, last slide, let's put it all together. I was kind of tricky down here. I started one of the patterns we were talking about on beat two instead of beat one, so just be careful of that. Uh, the red dot will show the beats, not the rhythm. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Two, ready, go. One, and, four, and, one, a, uh, and three and four. Two a uh, and e one a uh, two three e and a uh, four. Again on ta. Ready? Go. Ta 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 Some difficult rhythms, like always, let me know if you need help. Seek me out. Good luck on the worksheet. See you guys next time.